Himalayan expedition is a tremendous experience for all those who take part. When we go on such an expedition, we live much the same as you would on a camping trip. An expedition is made up in Kathmandu, the last touch with civilization as we know it. After a brief but bumpy 15 mile drive to Bunipa, the end of the road, the porters take up their loads, about 60 pounds apiece, plus their personal belongings, and start the march in. Both men and women act as porters and carry equal loads. The Saabs, expedition members, have packs that are easier to carry. Often the line of porters is strung out over a mile or more in length. The country is rugged and beautiful, and there's always something to see. Terraced rice paddies, broad valleys, beautiful flowers, and magnificent mountains. And we pass monasteries with their many prayer flags fluttering in the breeze. It is the belief of these people that each time the flag waves, their prayer is repeated. From high up on the track, we can see the thin thread of the suspension bridge below, which our porters are crossing. These chains are forged locally in small villages. The suspension of these bridges is not always reliable, so it's wise to keep one hand on the chain. A little invocation to your deity doesn't hurt either. But there are still those who prefer to pour the stream and climb back up the hill to the trail. The march continues until about four o'clock in the afternoon when camp is set up for the night. In no time, the tents are pitched and we can relax for the rest of the evening. About 17 days later, we arrive at the village of Kumjung to be greeted by old friends. This school that we helped build at Kumjung was the first school in this part of the Himalayas. During its first two years, it seems to have met a basic need of the villagers and the parents and pupils gave us a wonderful welcome. One of the main projects of this trip was to pipe a supply of fresh water to Kumjung village. So we made our first base of operations here. The women of Kumjung had always carried water from its source a mile above the village. Their loads weighed 80 to 90 pounds. This new pipe of ours was going to make a great difference to them. Murray Ellis, our engineer, was in charge. He concentrated on getting a consistent fall so that the water would flow evenly. Since this area is so remote, the Sherpas used methods much the same as those used by Americans a century ago. Everything is done by hand, or with the help of simple hand tools. The villagers donated all their time and energy to this community project. We supplied the materials and the know-how. Finally, the water gushed out at the bottom. We built the 
second school at the village of Tami, a mere 12 miles from the Tibetan border. And as with all the schools, the head lama of Tangbochi performed the dedication ceremony. <laughs> By this time, several wives of expedition members had walked 170 miles to join us, and they too were present for the dedication. All the villagers took advantage of the head lama's visit to receive his blessing, as did the expedition members. Then, with the raising of the flag, and the singing of the national anthem, my wife Louise was given the honor of cutting the ribbon and officially opening the school. Desmond Doy thanked the head lama for his part in the dedication. A little more singing, A few more speeches. And then the serious business of enrolling students. Their parents signed the register with their thumbprints. The children at Tami looked much scruffier than those from Kumjong, who'd already had two years at school. Kumjong celebrated the second anniversary of its school with a sports day. The first sports day that had ever been held in the Kumbu area. There were traditional contests that are familiar to us, but everything was fresh and new to the Sherpas. The Saabs took part in the senior competition. There was a special contest for the girls. for the smaller children. I must say the parents thoroughly enjoyed this one. There were several tug-of-war contests, some between the Sherpas and another between the Sherpas and the Saabs. Needless to say, the Sherpas won. Perhaps they had more fresh replacements. The obstacle race was great fun. Desmond Doig had managed to scrape together enough material to set up quite a course. And it was very interesting to see how some of the boys reacted to new situations. have a sports day in the Himalayas without having some sort of a climbing contest. On the whole, the sports day was a great success. And I have no doubt that the boys are practicing up on their skills in preparation for the second annual sports day.